Okay, well, Review Starlight may actually be the best show on this list now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> Guys, welcome back to The Sounding Board. That's our podcast mm -hmm. where we talk all sounding all the time. Wow. We're going to take a quick sounding break to sound off on this week's crop of anime mm -hmm. on our Anime FMK segment, short segment, and then we'll go back to sounding talk. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to keep this brief. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it as brief as possible. We'll talk about Chio's School Road. In episode seven, in part one, Chio attempts to buy a boys love magazine at a convenience store without embarrassing herself. And then in part two, you know that one episode of Naruto where Kakashi puts his fingers up his students' asses? Well, tune in for more of that. There was also a third segment. There was. It was very short. In yeah. fact, what even happened? Had to do with the old woman, uh, and they came yeah. up with this elaborate story oh, for what yeah. she's doing, and really yeah. she's just... Yeah. Mooch and Wi-Fi. Yeah, it was, it was a cute bit. It was looked like the sort of thing that was adapted from a four coma. Mm-hmm. By the way, so I want to talk about the Kancho segment. That's the second part. Yes, yeah. I, I'm aware that this is a Japanese thing that... Yeah, grade schoolers and stuff, they think it's funny because their children right. they just go up behind their friends and boop. Mm -hmm. um, which it's never, it never actually goes up the asshole, but it's, it's right. like when you go up behind your friends and knee them in the ass. That's something like kids at my school did all the time. Yeah, I can't say like... Closest to that was like giving somebody a flat tire, but that seems far more <laughs> cruel than either. I don't know what a flat tire is. It's all it is is when you're like walking in a line like you do in elementary school, you you step on the heel mm. of the person in front of you so uh, that yep. their shoe comes part way off. Oh, okay. It's one uh, of those little dick things that kids do. My, yeah. yeah, like I I kids would always do like the the kidney shots all the time and that made me terrified for people touching me now. So I assume everyone's gonna attack me. God, I'm so sorry. It's yeah, no, I had that problem. I had that problem for a little while too. Um, That's why you flinch before I donkey punch you. Yeah, only before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 silly and it's weird. But I can I can totally see kids doing that. Yeah. It's, um, but here. It is sort of hilarious, and we'll, we'll talk about that segment I was talking the first. I just wanted to get out of the way that concho is a thing. Uh, they call it enema in this, and it's yeah. like, look, that's mm. technically the word that they use for enemas in Japan, but it's not the same. It is not actually the same thing. Don't yeah. just say concho. Eh. Well, yeah, part part one I found charming and adorable. Mm -hmm. yep. and oh, yeah. I I could be wrong, but this felt like something written for a female character by a male writer because as a male person, boy, I could relate to this. That first time you buy porn in a store. <laughs> back when that was where you got your porn. You know, for a minute there, I thought this was... It, I've seen women write for how women buy porn, and this was actually not that far off. Okay, so yeah, maybe this is a more universal experience than, than I gave it credit for. I just I found it very funny because... You know, she starts looking at these dudes mm -hmm. and she's like, oh, right, I'm a teenage girl and I can, st like, she's like, oh, I hate all these life guys. Which, by the way, I'd like to point out that this segment did a lot for me because I'm like, no, I hate boys love too. I hate it because <laughs> it's a bunch of skinny, like, pretty boys and that's not what I'm into. I don't <laughs> like that. And it's why 99% of anime guys, when they're like, who's your favorite dude? And I'm like, I don't know, who's got muscle on them? Now, now tell me what you are into and how it relates to your very nice hat. Uh, I like roses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I got a funny story about this hat uh, that from Anime Fest. A uh, kid actually came up to me. I was doing autographs with Bennett because he's like, hey, you want to do autographs with me? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, I think he was like 10, 11 maybe. And, you know, I'm, he's getting my autograph and I'm signing it. And mm -hmm. he's like, I like your hat. Y yeah. It's <laughs> like, yeah, it's red and black. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 it is most certainly red and black. I love the I love her going off on the JRPGs. Yes, I, I thought yeah. like that was that was particularly good. And like I mean, because it's like something everybody thinks, but hearing it from a Japanese person was particularly I don't know cathartic to me. It is interesting because you rarely get that so kind of self reflection, yeah. so brutally and forwardly in almost anything mm -hmm. to see. A, a Japanese writer have one of his characters be like, what is up with JRPGs? <laughs> Why are the protagonists either like these little kids with these huge weapons that don't make any sense, or they look like they're dressed... What was it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they're they're escort, uh, yeah. escort guys. Yeah, yeah, they look like they're escort dudes. And I'm like, that is amazing. And yeah. it's just a nice extra piece of characterization for Chio that she's that deep a nerd that yeah. she has to go to the West to get her nerd fix. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh yeah, she's the opposite. She's like, mm-hmm. I need my Western games with my violence and my big buff dudes. I don't want these. I don't want any of this. You know, JRPG bullshit. That's mm-hmm. it's really funny. It's weird. It's it's like weirdly analogous to how we have to pay a premium over here for the really eccentric, weird shit that yeah. comes from Japan. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I get you. Steam references. Yeah, we yeah. That was just a straight up Steam page. I'm like, oh, I gotta get the Japanese pack. Damn it. And th- I, I can't believe it. Social commentary on video games. It, yeah. It's no, amazing. It's I was like, holy crap. This show is doing something that I was really hoping it would do with the idea of a nerd character. These are actual nerd jokes. Yeah. Like, like goddamn. Yeah, that's, that, was, that was my problem with Wodakoi. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> no, this is an actual human who actually is into this stuff. And I, it felt more applicable to real world things for me. I love that. And it's just like, yes, of course you'd be like, why the fuck are JRPGs everywhere? Why does every dude look like this if they have to be gay? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, they even say they like uh-huh. they're so effeminate that everyone abroad thinks they're gay. Yep. <laughs> By the way, I'm really hoping in the uh, in the English version. So she says, uh, in the Japanese version, it's like, it's being taken over by the homos. <laughs> and I'm hoping, I'm hoping in the American version, she says, this is the gay agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really hoping oh, that's that, the That'd be really good. But yeah, I know. That what? first bit was really good. Yeah. I loved it. And yeah. I love, I love that uh, fucking, uh, what's, what is, Ando. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. The, the, he deserves a name because I keep calling him Nata. Yeah. That's what he is. He's, he's discount Nita in my <laughs> notes. But but yeah, that the fact that it was him working at the convenience store and the whole the whole payoff to everything is that he's, oh, by the way, you forgot your Boys Love magazine. I should probably wrap that up for you so that nobody sees it. Yeah. Well, yeah, more specifically, it's like, hey, don't leave with that magazine on the open. People can be really judgmental. And I, you and like I would you like. never do that. But yeah. And I think he's honest about it. He's yeah, like, look, I'm, I'm not judging you. I'm into things, too. Like, But it's like, that's... Yeah, well, and that and that was the also the coda to to this was oh she's into it I'll check it out <laughs> and then he's yeah. playing the boys love and then yeah. his friend thinks and then oh my god mm-hmm. what a ah oh, and you know and I I'm so happy that we're all this like happy about this first segment this second segment's good too and that that makes me happy because there are too many times where I'm like all right let's talk about this one good segment before we got to talk about the shitty one yeah and I feel like the the second one was was fine I think the first one was definitely stronger for me but I as as a kid as a, who thought he was a Saiyan and who knew he could go Super Saiyan two and beat his <laughs> friend uh, this was I get this I was like no well, we're gonna we're gonna go fight oh shit there's people around we gotta we gotta quiet it down. <laughs> I've done that so many times. And yeah, I, I didn't care for that second segment, but the thing is, it's cultural differences. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. I could not appreciate it because it seemed weird and gross to me, but I know it's not actually. I know it's fine. That's just my Western sensibilities. It is a little weird and gross, but then again, kids are also weird and gross. Well, yeah. So I kind of accept that. Yeah. Um, but I do, yeah, I do love how they play it out. I love the fact that, yeah, they play it like... You know, even they even have the same yeah, Super it's, Saiyan class. It's the, shonen, like, it's the big shonen battle. Yeah, of course. And and running around like a couple of fucking ninjas. And, Yo, I've done that so many times. And I felt like as they got a little gross with Comedy Girl, but they also used her more effectively here. Like they 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 overstepped a little bit, but brought it back without her actually touching the girl. I'm like, oh please don't. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, are we about to get real gross here? No, she she pulls it back. Good use of her for the most part. Mm. So yeah, I I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that this episode does start with perhaps the most egregious panty oh, shot yeah. we've gotten yet. Uh huh. Just the, no the opening shot is just hey, full on. Uh-huh. Here is her ass. Yeah. It, okay. Now let's no go to this reason. convenience store. Yep. She's on her way to the convenience store, and the first the opening shot is yeah. her butt. Extreme close up ass in your face. Man, I uh, I might have missed the opening like a couple seconds then. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, you'd, you'd remember it if you'd seen it. Yep, yeah. I guess I did. I mean, mm. yo, you didn't miss anything. So <laughs> don't oh, worry about weird, it. But obviously. <laughs> I know how much you want to look at uh, 15-year-old butts. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I am I like this episode. This is this episode has a lot of the stuff that I like from this mm-hmm. show. It has more of the game brain stuff. It has real actual nerd humor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, God damn. Even if it even if it is just kind of stating it flatly, mm-hmm. like I just love this kind of introspection and I like a character really getting into it. Mm-hmm. 
I don't think this would have hit me as hard if it wasn't a Japanese person doing this. I was like, that's yeah. what fa- I found most fascinating because I can get that kind of shit anywhere L- over here. Look, if you if you want an American shitting on Japanese culture, yeah. you've got me here. <laughs> <laughs> but this was uh, this was a lot of fun. I I still think I still think this show has a lot of a lot of charm to it. I think it's got. The characters are enjoyable. I know exactly what I'm getting now. And even if I get a stinker coming up, I feel like I'm always at least getting rewarded for one segment out of three, which is which is fine. Because if the worst it does is be a little gross, I'm at least laughing for some part of it. I, I thought the third segment in here was kind of a throwaway. I can tell why they just kind of did it, brushed it off, moved yeah. past it. Still has a funny joke in there. It's just... Eh, a little too cynical for my taste. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, no, this was this show is surprising to me. And I mean surprising that almost every episode has a joke that I don't see coming. Mm-hmm. And that's great. Like I like the fact that I'm always getting kind of something new with each episode and you know, it it makes up for its stinkers. Mm-hmm. Like well well enough. Uh also um I'm glad, I remember when we originally started this show, I was expecting something more surreal. That mm. trailer sells you a oh, very, yeah. yes. very different show. And while I would still love that show someday, I love that kind of like, I want the surrealist, I love surrealists. Yeah. Um, so if we get that one day, that'd be cool. But I'm glad we got this. I'm glad we got Chio School Road. I'm glad that this has made it this far into the season because I thought it was going to die after mm. episode three at first. Yeah. I, I got to be honest. I mean, this this show's been a mixed bag since Jump, and this was probably, if only on the strength of that first part, a stronger mixed bag than some of them that, we, that we've got. But I'm not like hating my time with this show generally, with some exceptions that we've talked about. Yeah. But I'm kind of ready to move on. That said, that's with no particular acrimony. That's a double fuck. It's gonna live to next week. I can't say I'm sad about it. Yeah. So. That's and you, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> You're not bored with the show. No, no, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Let's talk about something I'm bored with. Happy Sugar Life. <laughs> every, every week. Every week. Yeah, yeah, no, uh-huh. it's, yep. In episode six, we get some bro-bro backstory. Creeper Teacher gets entirely too much screen time to establish that he is, in fact, still creepy. Normal Girl confronts Pink Girl about her imaginary boyfriend, and Pink Girl says she'll tell her everything and invites her over to probably get murdered. That cliffhanger had me audibly go, fuck you! Yeah, oh, oh are you kidding me? No, <laughs> I, like, I... You can't do that. You can't end on that, you little shithead. I was so angry. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This is where we're going to end the episode? I hate you, Happy Sugar Life. If I were a... If I weren't... If I were a worse man, I would have found the manga and I would have started reading <laughs> I, know, I right? swear to God. Yeah, no, this... Uh, I feel like this episode um, did a lot for the development of everyone that needed to be done. Um, in particular, seeing the brother's backstory. I thought that was great. And the use of Static Dad was so cool. Yeah. I love how creepy he is and how, like, you see his hand emerge from, like, the creepy Static whenever he actually touches him. That's the only time he seems human is when he's assaulting him. Like, that is awesome. I'd, I'd like to point out that I will say this. I love the imagery there. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the visuals. I liked everything up until where we actually see him start to abuse him. Not that ne- that necessarily sends mm-hmm. me over the edge, but one of the things that I like about this show that it does, you know, particularly well, it, and this is what horror does very well, it's a sign of good horror, is that the thing you don't see is the scariest mm, yeah. stuff. That's why I think I didn't like when we actually started to get violence from this show, because mm-hmm. I feel like that takes a step down. I feel like, okay, now you're pulling away, you are, you are making it more visually obvious and it's not doing it well enough mm, for it to yeah. sell the violence that it shows. Like when he starts ripping yeah. off the th- nails, I'm like, okay, that's terrible and creepy and painful, but I'll, also it's kind of laughable. I'll, I'll throw this out there. Like the bit with the nails like actually did make me cringe. Oh, that, yeah, that, 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 that got, got a reaction me. out of me. Mm. But the part where the dad hit him mm-hmm. just came across so fucking weak. Like there was no impact. No, it, it there did. was no Yeah. Actually, and that's one thing I'll say about this episode is that while it does a lot of its visual stuff, its visual aesthetic is well, well mm-hmm. done. Its actual technical quality, so mm-hmm. you actually took a dip from its no, previous. No, I, I definitely think this episode was weaker in terms of the uh, production side. There were a lot of shots that looked weird, a lot of off-model hands, heads being too big in shots, a lot of stuff that didn't look right. Yeah. Uh, but the aesthetic was still there, which I'm I'm giving okay, giving it a pass for. And I saw it as, you know, that's the only time he is real is when he's touching him. That's how I read it. 
that might be giving it too much credit, but yeah. that's that's at least how I saw it. But I get what you're saying. The moment he starts becoming more human, he's less scary. Um, yeah, and that's well, and it's not just becoming more human, but again, it's seeing the actual violence mm -hmm. happen because when you when you think about it. Like, it is, it is kind of more terrifying when your mind starts to fill in the blanks of what's happening to these kids. Yeah. So, again, when you see it happen, it's like, well, that wasn't actually as scary as it was in my head. And now yeah, I'm just yeah. sort of let down. Yeah, no, I, um, I get that. Which is weird to say that I'm like, you know, I want to see... You didn't beat them hard enough. <laughs> yeah. um, but, again, that's... The, again, the, I'm treating this like a horror, and I think yeah. that's the right, the right decision. No, I think that's is. what it wants to do. Absolutely. So... In that regard, it's this episode was actually more middle of the road for mm -hmm. me. Except again, like that lead up to that last part because I, I know when when her friend pins her, it's like no, you need to tell me. Damn it, I'm not letting this go. And it's like, girl, girl, no, you mm -hmm. don't want to do this. You, I don't know if you know what yeah. happens to people mm -hmm. who do this. Yeah, uh, and. and I have no idea what Sato is going to do. I know. I have no idea what Sato's thinking right now. Yeah, because like, they she so clearly was like, you don't want to get involved. You just just stay friends. And I like how it reflected her. Um, I, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, Shira Ishi. Oh, oh, Shira Ishi. Yeah, is that her name? I think that's the name of the girl. Whatever, plain girl, coworker, friend. Uh, but when she got rejected, essentially. How, you know, she's talking, uh, Sato's talking, but she doesn't hear it. She's only, like, stuck internally, and you see, like, the FOV kind of slide out, like she's sliding further and further away. I'm like, that's really good. That's, again, I like what the show does visually with depicting anxiety. That's what it, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Isn't Shiraishi the name of the Escape King? In yes. There's, yes. There's been a Shiraishi in damn near every show, <laughs> yeah, it feels a, like. You know, it's weird. I kind of feel like this might be, uh, you know, the barn fallacy, but I feel like we're getting a lot of Shiraishi out mm -hmm. of nowhere. Yeah, I don't, I don't know Mocula. if that's just a particularly common name or if it's one of those names that goes in and out of style and mm. it's really in style right now, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, no, this... I didn't hate this episode, but it... Eh. No, I, I I get you. There was a, there wasn't it was not nearly as strong as I think the one before it. Yeah, uh, the one be, and we also have some other stuff going on, like the mm -hmm. the teacher, the, the teacher who's apparently been at that same uh, keyboard for like two <laughs> weeks straight now, <laughs> three months. It, yeah. <laughs> well, he follows them and he gets them on video, and now yes. he's following them home. And I'm like, there's a lot of stuff. No, there's a lot of moving gears happening right now. And I'm, yeah. th and that, honestly, the fact that I notice those and see that is good to me. I'm like, okay, you have, you're spinning a lot of threads, but I see where you're going with it. And I'm so glad they didn't just drop it and say, no, you don't want to see what I do. Yes, have her come over. What the fuck is Sato going to do? Is she going to show her? Is she going to kill her? I don't fucking know. And the teacher now is going to blackmail her or something. Yeah. So. I, I don't. For a while, I've been kind of up and down on this show. Uh, and again, I've, I've made my feelings on it perfectly clear. I don't think it has to be restated. Um, that being said, I'm going to do something. I'm probably going to keep watching this show, but only to satisfy my own personal curiosity. Like, because I, okay, I want to know how this is going to turn out. <laughs> that being said, I kind of feel like this has to be held up because I feel like this is now a personal thing and not something where I want to tell people, hey, watch this show. I mean, I'm not going to complain. I know Ben's never going to complain. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, you know what it is. You know what's good. Everybody out there who's watching, you know you love it. I don't need to say anything. I mean, surprising no one. <laughs> that is a double knife. And here's what I realized here, which is that, and this is a problem that I have with a lot of horror, is that I, I like some dark shit sometimes. Mm -hmm. I like Berserk. I like Gantz. I like Game of Thrones. But especially in Berserk, and to a lesser extent, uh, some of the others, but especially in Berserk, the, the characters are what draws are what draw me in. Mm -hmm. They're they're what what makes it worth bearing through all the oppressive darkness mm -hmm. in this show and in a lot of horror, and that's why I don't like a lot of horror. Mm -hmm. The characters are either insane, abusive monsters or helpless victims. Yeah, and I have a hard time caring about either one. You know that that is completely and honestly, I I get you one hundred percent. Like I get that. For me, this was all about seeing like how terrible they could get, and that's that was the driving thing for me, especially because there's. There's no one monster here. 
Yeah. Like there's no one monster that, and, and so that kind of changes the, uh, the, the, the concept for me from one person like basically being the monster mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. everybody's kind of the monster. There's just one monster that's more dangerous than the others. I'm wondering how these monsters are going to bounce off each other. Yeah, and, mm. and that just doesn't do anything for me. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's probably going to go get murdered because she's not a crazy monster yet, and everybody who's not a crazy monster either becomes one or gets murdered. So why mm. should I care? Actually, I feel like this show is not... I, I, there's the threat of her being murdered. I don't think she's going to be. I think... Yeah, she I, might go crazy. Well, yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> she, she, may go, she may go crazy. Yeah. But I'm, I'm kind of... And see... That's why I'm curious. That's why I'm going to watch, because I actually want to know what this show is going to do with it. And I might come back later and say, you know what? My biggest mistake was killing Happy Sugar Life. <laughs> but um, oh, the other thing that I was going to say, shit, I was going to say one other thing. What was it? Was uh, it uh, from another scene? No, 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 no. Ah, uh, damn it. I forgot. Oh, well. Yeah, if you think of it, we can yeah. go back. It's fine. Yeah. But... Let's move on to Review Starlight. Mm. In episode six, Blue is acting jealous that Red is hanging around with Blonde, and also she gets told that her acting sucks, so she decides to quit and move back to her hometown, but it's all a bluff for attention that Red sees right through. Then a big magical girl fight happens. Blue announces that she now understands all that Red has done for her, and that Bl she, Blue, does not deserve to be a stage girl and tries to throw the fight, but Red stops her. At which point, Blue says, ha ha, my acting doesn't suck so much now, does it? And so we learn that being emotionally manipulative is bad, unless you're good at it, which makes it good. Fuck this show. <laughs> ben, I agree with you. Just want to say that. Okay. I This episode, I felt was... It knew what it was doing... I didn't like it. <laughs> like it, I, I feel like this is what it took for me to go, okay, we've had two episodes now back to back of developing more of the side characters, which I'm, I'm, I was initially glad was happening, but now I'm like, okay, so everyone has a conflict and that conflict is always resolved and nothing bad ever happens. You will always be happy. Yeah, nobody is ever a murderer or a helpless victim. <laughs> like I and for for what it's doing, I think that's good because it, it wants to tell a story about ensemble pieces and everyone has a, a part that matters. Everyone has their own role to play, if you will. But to me, I I think conflict makes a more interesting story. And right now our only conflict is the fights, but clearly that's not really that important because everyone is going to matter at the end anyway. So what's the conflict here? So I think my problem was that it seemed to want you to care about Red and Blue making up and being friends again at the end. Mm -hmm. And Blue was such a shit human being throughout this whole story mm -hmm. that I'm kind of like, no, go back home. I, I don't Yeah, go want back. Actually have some consequences. Sure, go back home. You fucked up and you can't get in dancing school. But it doesn't want to tell that. It wants to be really fluffy and sell a lot of merchandise. <laughs> I kind of agree. I wanted, like, I like the story that it's trying to tell here because the idea is you have this girl who's actually exceptionally good at what she does. Mm -hmm. But she knows that. She knows that she's good. She knows that she, can, she was able to get by. She was born into this. And she looks at it as a bother but she likes the attention. Mm -hmm. So she wants one without actually having to try. Yeah. So when she leaves, you know, she was going to probably get on that train, but at the same time, she was desperately hoping somebody would stop her. Totally. And that's, you know, that's, I like that. I like that story. I like mm -hmm. that because I, it's, it's, it's a cool, it's an interesting character. Uh, I, I, I like brats. Brats are fine as long as, you know, they they actually develop and here that development comes so swiftly and so painlessly because mm -hmm. oh yeah she she came to stop her which i was kind of happy about like yeah no mm -hmm. go to your go to your friend but also make them work harder and yeah apparently she's working harder now i guess 
Like, they wanted to tell this story in an episode. You, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah it didn't way, feel earned. It's way more difficult to tell this sort of story in one episode. And I give this show a lot of leeway for doing so good with its visual storytelling that, it, that its narrative stuff, mm-hmm. I'm like, I let you go because I see what you're doing. Yeah. But it's not that strong here. And again, this is something that's a little bit more complicated than what, than what it's trying to represent. And I do like its character moments. The stuff with red and blue is is... Is fascinating and real and 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 it's just uh. I you know what I would have liked was because this was very much focused on blue. Mm-hmm. I would have liked more of red. Like what kind of a person does let themselves be such a doormat and how do they how do they go about making the decision that no, this isn't how I'm gonna be anymore? Mm-hmm. That's a story that I would have been at least theoretically interested in, and we mm-hmm. didn't really get it here. Yeah, and I, I can't I can't assume we would get any more of that, but I don't know. I I don't I don't feel bad, I guess, because I've done nothing but give this show chances. And I understand, and I totally agree with you that it's visual storytelling I've found to be exceptional. I love what it's doing when it does things symbolically, but when it tries to play by a more conventional narrative, I was like, oh, that's that didn't really do much. And you just kind of went straight through it. I kind of liked when there were more mysteries to it, but now we're just getting to, well, the auditions don't really matter because you, we already know everyone is going to play a role. We all already know that it doesn't matter. Everyone wants to be the best, but there can only be one the best, except we're all the one best. Well, I, I, I think it's sort of an interesting story because... One of the messages that I would want this to send home is that it doesn't matter where you are on the list. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you get on, if you're in it, yeah. then you made it. Yeah. Because and that is a good message to send. Mm-hmm. Like never. S- yep. It, and and if you get if you don't make the list, then you're trash. <laughs> and go back to Kyoto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm just goofing. Um, and see, uh, on one hand, you know, I I get no stakes and we know that they're all going to make it on there Mm -hmm. but again that's why I'm invested in the way it tells its story Mm -hmm. and that's why here I'm frustrated because this was a bad example of that like like I know that you've had misgivings about the show and all all this is doing the wrong thing for me now Mm. and it's weird because now it's trying to do the right thing for you by telling (laughs) you a more cohesive coherent story (laughs) and I'm like yeah. What happened to this? Like, I only let this go when it was trying to be less narratively structured. And and see, this just kind of confirms the suspicion that I've had all along, which is that they're doing all this non-conventional stuff, not because, oh, wow, let's break the, the structures of a conventional story, mm-hmm. and more because they're incompetent at those structures. Yeah, I, I don't... I was kind of... I know some people don't like Madoka, uh, but I saw a lot of that in the beginning of this show. Oh, absolutely. That there was this, you... Yeah, there's this like this world behind this curtain and that is very mysterious. And by episode three, you're like, nope, fuck your traditional story. We're doing something crazy. And that hasn't happened yeah. yet. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of did it. It did Kinda. it. It did it in episode one to a certain extent by introducing the draft stuff. And that's like, that's interesting. But it's never it's never done anything with it except for yeah. the same thing again and again. Which again, I was really happy with for a while, mm-hmm. and now it's kind of like, okay, did you kind of feel like you ran that thin, and now you're trying to do more conventional storytelling because that's, I don't know, that's not actually why I was I was tuning in. Yeah. yeah, this this thing that started off being so barrier shattering and transgressive has now just degraded into formula. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I think that is what hit me the most when I was like, and I know exactly how this is going to end. And it ended exactly how I thought it would mm-hmm. with nothing being changed. You can say, sure, she's developed as a character, but that affects literally no one else. And I, I, I don't know. I was happy. Like, and, you know, maybe I shouldn't be that happy with it. It's what should have happened was when they told her, no. You're not in this. You are not a part of the main cast. Mm-hmm. You aren't trying hard enough. And I'm like, yeah, okay, good. So her sleeping and her being that character, we're not just going to brush that off. 
Yeah, if, if you work in a creative industry, then you know this person who's been coasting this far on pure talent yeah. and then finally rises to a level where that's not enough anymore. And that can be an interesting story. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't told well here. Because yeah. all they needed was two days worth of yeah. <laughs> of, of moping and booing, then and it's, that's it's, fine. And it's especially frustrating because the the thing that, you know, at the very end, the communication is, see, when you apply yourself, you do well. Better than the girl who's been putting in the hours, though? That kind of, mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, now you're on par with the girl who had to drop literally everything and train at night and the morning and everything to, and carry your dumb ass. Now you're equal with her. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hmm. I, so, I feel like it's, it's hard to divorce the quality of this episode from the message slash story it's telling. But that alone, I feel like this was more indicative of my growing problem with the show was that it just didn't feel like it was going anywhere with something that seemed to have so much promise and does have so much life about it. This one felt particularly hollow to me. And I don't know. I, I feel like this is and not the weakest episode, but it just... Oh, this it, was wholeheartedly the weakest episode to me. Yeah, I don't know. And how about the fact that she's leaving school? Oh, there's a lot that goes into leaving a school. You don't just up mm -hmm. and leave and then come back and everything's okay. What about the paperwork that had to be filed? What about... What oh, oh you, th you think this lazy ass actually filed any paperwork? Or was she, <laughs> was she just boarding yeah. the train and relying on other people to figure out the rest for her? I yeah. mean, that, okay, you know what? I actually believe that wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> also, considering that it was at least like three quarters a bluff to begin with. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it was... It, it, it kind of did seem like one of those things. Again, I thought she was going to get on the train if she if the other girl didn't show up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, she very well might have. Yeah. Um, but I am glad. Uh, and again, I am glad that she showed up. I'm not. I didn't want her to leave, but I wanted there to be something. I don't know. It, maybe it would have been better if that fight had been better. Because that, that fight was just yes. okay. Yeah. That mm -hmm. fight was like, had a lot, again, great staging. Mm -hmm. I loved the stage of it. The yep. song was really, song was really cool. Good. I was Absolutely. like, oh, yeah, no, let's get traditional Japanese music up in this. But yeah. I like the, the whole sak uh, the Sakura uh, imagery. I like that stuff. Like, yeah. That was all really cool. Flashing back to them being kids and then the, the petals falling together at the very end. I thought it was kawaii, yeah. but not. Yeah. I also noticed that earlier in the episode was, I think, the first time that we've gotten, like, seen this magical girl fight stuff happening, mm -hmm. not as part of the big final number of the episode. There was no song. It was just, like, a montage, basically. Might have been a dream sequence. I don't know. Oh, it was a flash forward to the fight. Yeah, but... Mm, yeah. That, that also drove home to me, like, just how mundane this thing that was such a part of the spectacle of this show had mm -hmm. become like, oh yeah, and this is just part of our routine now. Sometimes we do this. I still don't know what the draft stuff is. And okay, look, I was okay with that for the first three episodes. Like totally okay with that. What is this? Because it's diegetic. It, it's diegetic. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, they, they talk about the giraffes auditions. Yeah. What is this? Because there's so much artistic license that I can give until it's like, okay, but... I'm not. I'm not sure. Like, if it, I'm, if it's supposed to be communicated to me through its visuals and its themes, what these are, maybe culturally I'm out of the loop. But if this is supposed to be something that is explainable mm -hmm. diegetically, I'm not getting that. And it's like, okay. And, and yeah. the fact that the characters just universally accept it and don't question, like, yeah, there's this giraffe and it's apparently magical. That's that's a real stretch. That doesn't. That's never bothered me. I don't think that like is really my problem lies in the conflict with this. Because mm -hmm. I want to hold this up and be very clear. I've had my fill, um, and I think it's I think it's fine. I think the show is doing something for a lot of people. I think the show is has so much passion. I think the people that are working on it flip and love it, and they're doing whatever they can to make sure it happens. I know they are, because they're having a lot of troubles, and they're trying to fight through it to make this happen. So they have some passion. It's there, but to me, uh, I, I'm okay with the everything's fine. Everyone's got their part to play, peppy message, but it's just not a, convinced, it's not a compelling story anymore. I don't know what happened if this is a sign of their production troubles, or 
if this is just legitimately their own flat out incompetence on how to make a story. Uh, I, you were talking about the fact that you think that they just cannot or do not know how to tell this sort of story. I'm going to be a little bit more lax and say things might have happened, but I'm also not discounting the fact that, yeah, maybe they're bad at this. Yeah. But I do know that I was getting something really good out of this show early on, something truly enjoyable out of this show early on. And I just didn't get that this episode. Like, there were, again, there were things that I did like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a lot, all the character moments, great stuff. But it is not the sum of its parts. It is, mm -hmm. it is less than the sum of its parts. And in that regard, uh, it's kind of weird because last week, you know, we had that big blow up and we had that argument. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be that guy who's going to defend something that he is like, maybe this is on, like, and, and I'm probably still going to keep watching this, mm -hmm. but the reason I'm knifing it now specifically, because I was just ready to hold up an eggplant, but then I thought to myself, if this continues to go downhill from, downhill from here on out, I don't think I want to talk about that here. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah, I'm, yeah. I think I'd be sad to talk about that here. I'm going to I'm going to stay invested in it and I'm that might sound like meta gaming like I care about this show more than I care about or I care more about mm, our show than yeah. I care about the show but I'm 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 playing this pretty openly. I'm I'm knifing this. I'm killing this here, uh, here. so when I if this goes bad, I'm not going to just depress myself. <laughs> and and you're right. I did say that that I felt they were incompetent at telling a traditional story. That's speculation on my part. I don't know that. All I do know is that so far in this particular show, mm -hmm. they have not demonstrated that ability. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they don't have it. They yeah. may have just bitten off more than they could chew in this instance. I don't know. That said, I mean, surprising nobody, that's a knife for me. I haven't been feeling this from the start, and mm -hmm. this, was, this was pretty weak, even by the standards. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a triple knife for Review Starlight. Which, which thus... Mm -hmm. Solidifies and saves a happy sugar life. Yep. I can't believe Kieran metagamed. <laughs> <laughs> That's you at home. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. It's right. They make me so mad. Right. Can we move on? <laughs> Do you mind if we actually take a quick break? Yes. After yeah. These quick messages. break. Nature break. Everybody, get your natures on. Sure. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. We're here. We're banana fish. Are we, though? Fishing. Yes. In episode seven, Ash's group shows up at the mysterious Los Angeles address just in time to foil a kidnapping. Only the victim turns out to be a Chinese mafia plant who orders Shorter to spy on Ash's group. Ash hacks into what is clearly Windows XP and gets some data on the banana fish drug. As the episode ends, Max's ex-wife and son are targeted by the Chinese mafia cliffhanger. Another one where I audibly said, fuck you! <laughs> By the way, yeah, uh, anybody who didn't call this as Moon immediately, mm -hmm. like, I don't know if this show is really trying to hide it, but I'm like, yeah, that's the Moon, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he's in, he's in the opening, too. I, that that I didn't quite notice immediately, but mm. after he started, yeah. after he was in a room with Shorter, I'm like, oh, that's that, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, the only reason yeah. I noticed it is because I happened to be watching the opening this time and realizing, huh, we haven't seen that dude yet. There he is. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I liked seeing Max's soon-to-be ex-wife. Yeah, ex -wife. I wasn't sure if she's ex-wife or the if they're separated. Is. Yeah. They what? make they make uh, reference to some sort of custody yeah, battle. They're, yeah, they're they're separated. They're not properly divorced yet. But gotcha. They are they are apparently getting divorced. Uh, yeah. Probably because he went to prison. <laughs> yeah. Probably. But I uh, I liked that scene. I thought it was that was really nice what seeing him and his kid. What do the Japanese think with guns, by the way? Where she comes out with the gun, and I'm like, okay, look. Yeah. If this were like a a, a very rural part of a south uh, of a southern country, sure, I can see her coming out with a gun. You're in the middle of Los Angeles. What part of Los Angeles? It, it looked like the suburbs to yeah, me. Yeah, it looked like it looked like the <laughs> suburbs. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't buy that for a second. Um, especially with how nice they're like, how nice that neighborhood looks. Yeah, nah. But then how do you explain the gang activity at the end of the episode? Clearly it's not that nice of a neighborhood. You know, I guess that's fair. Uh, this episode was decompression, which was 
fine, I think. Decompression and building up yeah, some pressure. And like, like, this is like the, okay, that last part's over. Now we're going to start seeing more of the Chinese stuff going on. Like, okay. Cool. Feel like, yeah, I feel like it's pushing the ad out of one thing and just into yeah. another. It's it's kind of it's kind of <clears throat> neat like that. Um, I don't like Ag saying at the beginning, I or not Ag uh, Ash saying at the beginning, all parents are terrible, because just last episode <laughs> we had him and his dad, yeah. and I'm like, who are you now? You'd like we had some development and then that stopped. What what's what's your deal? It was bad development. But yeah, <laughs> I mean at least some. They tried to have something there. It just felt like really consistent. Yeah. It was a minor thing, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't feel like it's inconsistent. I mean, his line, appro- the approximation of his line was, you know, you know, parents can truly pee awful because you can't pick your parents. You know, mm-hmm. when things go wrong, you're left with them, and that's all there is to it. And yeah. the, you know that. I like that. I like that line. It's like, hey, so what about think about your kid? Think about the way you're acting with each other, okay? Mm-hmm. And I can see that Max truly, honestly cares, but yeah. I don't know. I think that generalizing a bad experience with a parent to all parents for comic effect uh, is the sort of lazy plot development that you can see in season two of Final Fantasy Machine Abridged, available right now on youtube.com slash team four star. <laughs> <laughs> only people that worked on that are uh, bad, right? Yes. Only, all, only all, the, all bad storytellers. Yep, bad storytellers. Incompetent, you'd say. Uh, I would say incompetent. <laughs> Terrible. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think of this episode? I think this episode wasn't bad. Certainly not the way the last episode was bad. But it did remind me of just how little investment I actually have in this ongoing plot. Because they find all this data on the banana fish drug. And I was sitting there like, didn't we know all this? Mm-hmm. Was it just the audience that knew this? Did the yeah, characters dude. know this too? I I'm, I guess because they're treating it like it's new information, and I realize I haven't really been following it, and I kind of don't care. I don't like this show. I I wanted to like this show. I desperately wanted to like this show because I feel like this is one of those shows that's the biggest one of the se- you know one of the bigger ones this season. It's beautiful looking. It's made with a lot of passion, but this is. I don't know. Maybe for 1985, this this storytelling, this writing would have been more interesting and new. But it is 2018. I have seen every single one of these stories done better and by different people. And I can't do this. Like I, last week, I I knifed it because of something very personal. Mm-hmm. This week, I'm just knifing it because like I am tuned out. I watched this as closely as I could. You know, I didn't I didn't have anything else else in the background. Mm-hmm. I, like I watched this and I felt. Nothing. I felt nothing from this. Like, I felt less than nothing. I felt frustrated and bored. Uh, Ash has lost all interest to me. Uh, the only thing that came close to gaining my interest was his conversation with AG because I think they make a cute couple. And I think that's what the author also wanted us to think. And guess what? That's not enough to hold me. I'm not, I'm not into this bait. I am not into this show. I'm, not into, I'm certainly not into the story. Especially knowing that it was written in the 80s and there's no chance they actually get together at the end. Yeah, I... No. I think this is a bad show, you guys. I think you said this wasn't a bad episode. I would tend to disagree. I think it is another bad episode of another bad show. It's just, it. if this looked any worse, if it looked any worse, you guys, I think you would have knifed it already. I, go ahead, Kieran. I don't think, I'm not, I don't think you're wrong about that because I'm going to hold this up and say that I personally still get a lot out of this show. Um, I, I haven't seen that many anime shows that are Western set in America crime dramas. For how well they're telling it, I can't say it's the best, but that alone, uh, just because I enjoy anime and because I do like my Western, uh, you know, murder mystery gang crime drama thrillers that don't involve Yakuza members, but are essentially the Yakuza in America, uh, I think that there is enough there for me to, uh, a hook that's interesting enough for me, but I guess I'm more invested in the in the long form narrative. I think AG is pretty cool. I do like Ash. I like what they have going on, but... Uh, it's definitely not improving like I would hope. It's kind of 
I think for me, it like went up, kind of plateaued, and now it's just like we're just kind of slowly, slowly going downhill. But I'm still, I'm still on board. Yeah, you said, Scott, that, like I was about to say as well, I think I've kind of been giving the storytelling in this show a pass because it is so pretty, it is so Mm -hmm. stylish, and because, like you say, Kieran, the hook of this crime drama, this very Western crime drama, is something I'm more interested in than a lot of the broad concepts that we're dealing with. But, I mean, I go back to the question, if it wasn't for this show, would I, if this was just for my own personal enjoyment, would I be watching it? No, I'd probably probably if not have fallen off by now i'd probably be falling off right about now so i'm gonna hold up that knife uh not that it matters yeah not that it matters <laughs> with uh, with the triple knife for review starlight right i got that right yeah, yeah. for review starlight yeah. but yep we got uh, we got a double knife for banana fish living on borrowed time unless it can really pick it yeah. up in future weeks and hey as as i always like to say i would love it if it did mm mm-hmm. I'm I'm sad because I like shorter a lot. Mm-hmm. I yeah, like, I like yeah. I like his character design. Me too. I like his character. I like his background. Everything about shorter I like. Everything about Ash I like. Everything about Ag I like. Everything about Max I like. Why do I like all of these characters yet I hate the story that's being told with them? Mm-hmm. Like that's that's my biggest most frustrating thing is that I don't give I I gave a shit about Max and his son, mm-hmm. but his g- w- wife. His mm-hmm. soon-to-be ex-wife is kind of like in, in in repulsive to me, which mm-hmm. she shouldn't be. She should like I understand her frustration. I understand mm-hmm. why she's mad, but the story is so incompetent at communicating it that I'm like, ah, I just don't like you. Oh, hey, look, we have this new assassin character. Aren't you pretty and flamboyant? And uh, yeah, you're that character. You're you're mm-hmm. obviously a shoujo villain type character yeah. who is vaguely vaguely effeminate and. Maybe you're having feelings for shorter now, and I'm sure that's gonna go places because again, it's 1985, <laughs> and you're a woman writing. A, oh, sorry, I have I have, a, I have a problem with women writing gay romances half the time because most like they're usually completely unrealistic, and they're from a mm-hmm. female perspective. Just like how I don't like how men write a lot of women's perspectives. So it goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Let it just be out there. I'm. I'm it goes both ways, like live studio Brian. Uh, Planet with. <laughs> Very good. Yes, Ted, that was the joke. <laughs> In Planet with episode seven, Karoi Boy deals with some mild post homicidal depression after killing Luthor, but the way Luthor died raises questions about whether he's actually dead. Meanwhile, the Ceiling Faction dispatches a girl with hypno powers to Earth, and two members of those Sentai guys join her. Also, an entity that looks like Karoi Boy's older brother shows up, claims to be from the oldest race in the universe, spouts some cryptic nonsense, and does absolutely nothing. So, Shiraishi. Another Shiraishi. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or it might be, or it might just only be here. I might have fucked that up. <laughs> yeah. Regardless, yeah. Uh, man, this was... I, by the way, you skipped over something pretty important. The whole flashback of Sirius. I, I, yeah. I, I did only because that doesn't tell us a whole lot that we didn't already know. It gets into more detail, but we knew the broad strokes of this story. We, it does tell us something very important. It tells us that, because for the longest time, I thought uh, the Nebula, the girl, was mm-hmm. with Nebula. Mm-hmm. She yeah. actually joined Nebula, and yeah. she's a completely different spe- like alien it, race yeah, that we've never seen. Yeah, she's from another completely different thing. It does like, oh, okay. It does in fact drop some new proper nouns on us. Yes. Yes, yeah. it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was it is pertinent to note that I I like her because what this is setting up more and more that I really appreciate is that because we get more of Sensei's point of view, which I want to see, is that no, if I can prove to the dragon that I can make one of like these this race that evolved to manipulate their power to hate and kill, which you said was a problem that it'd be great if he didn't end it by punching him. And that's what he's getting at. He's like, yes, Sensei obviously agrees there. Um, and I'm, I just want to see what they do with it. That alone is un- like, I'm glad they put that more forward that no, we want these people to love and seeing her as like this real, whatever, I don't know, whatever they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, the real. Yeah. That they were actually under persecution from the Syracians and she still wanted to try and help them because that's the path of evolving for love. I'm like, that's, 
That's really interesting. And that's I also, like seeing that. That's also the first time that we get character from her because yeah. before mm-hmm. then it was a lot of like she's basically Haruko, Haru, 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 Haruko up until that point, just less crazy. Yeah, that's just, say it with me. What Sensei says, she's basically yeah. been a mouthpiece for Sensei up until mm-hmm. this point. Totally. And, but here we see that she's actually a huge empath. Mm-hmm. And that that's that's interesting. Uh, and on that note, uh, I kind of like piece this together. I don't know if, if this is like a true reading, but that she doesn't serve meat because they're all vegans because yep. they don't want to kill. And I'm hey. like, oh shit, is that what you're going for? That she's because that's like the path of love is to be vegan. I mean, a little ham fisted if you want to go that way. But I, 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 I am I am very curious about that. Um, it would be very interesting to me if one of the messages of this anime is <laughs> yeah. eat vegan or eat vegetarian because <laughs> that would be that would be hilarious. I, I won't would, lie to you. I would that would be so, so stupid. Yeah. But if that is the big <laughs> yeah. overall message of this is be yes. yeah, eat, planet with is vegan propaganda. Eat vegan or else you will turn into a dragon and destroy your home planet. <laughs> You got to play wide strokes with these analogies, okay? <laughs> um, look, the, the dragon was cow farts the whole time. Yeah, look, take care of the planet, or else alien probes trying to contact the whales might. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all comes back to Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, interesting stuff there. It's I don't I didn't know how I was feeling about this episode until I finally started talking about it with you. But yeah, it's interesting, and as, as things start getting pieced together, you're getting more of a sense of what this universe is about. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still kind of at that place where I'm a little bit frustrated that I'm not, I'm not hooting and hollering at these episodes. I'm not mm. all that engaged, but I am still interested and still engaged, and I want to see where it's going to go. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. Like I, I think I'm more interested because I, I have seen every breadth of Mecha Show, and there are so rarely shows that do this because it is so often the get stronger, use your show in power, and you be the best ever. Punch possibility out. <laughs> I don't, and so here's the other thing. I'm not sure that, um, oh God, what is it? Shoya? Kuroi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not sh- sure that Kuroi is the one that killed the other dude. Yeah, I, like, I don't know. By and large, he punches him, but we're not sure if that's what killed him because by and large, he had just done something terrible to his body. We don't know if he was going to survive after that or not. Yeah. We only, it only mi- it, yeah, it might just be that the dragon energy, like, fucked him up. Yeah. Um, but we we see a very subtle like so it's not explicit like he says like he died mm-hmm. did I kill him mm-hmm. I thought I'd be happy about this but I'm yeah, not yeah and the, and the response to him is this burnout and I'm glad that it's not just this immediate realization of like oh my god I just did something terrible it's I committed violence on another person their life has ended and I don't know what to do and that's this is not the way that I'd like to have seen it done, but that's an interesting route to take. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad that that is a route that they are taking. It's just, it also kind of feels a little, I don't know. On one hand, I feel like it should be playing into the melodrama of that. On the other hand, I'm like, I'm glad you're not because the melodrama of that would be to otherwise just state out loud like, oh no, now I have this big internal Now I am murder like, and I do not want to get in the robot. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's the thing, like that is a big, tough, touchy topic for an anime that is as anime as this anime yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, yeah so exact, exactly. To tackle. Uh, when I went, I've talked a little about how a, a few weeks, probably more than a month ago now, I went on that leadership retreat to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. One of the guys there that I was doing that with is a veteran, mm-hmm. and that's something that he's dealing with, is the human human beings are not meant to kill each other. That is a traumatic thing mm-hmm. to have done, and like s- having seen that firsthand, I c- I kind of really don't want some cartoonish, overblown version of that. Yeah, that's not to say that there's not necessarily any v- value in that ever, but boy, I don't want to see it just because. I've seen it in a very limited capacity at second hand mm-hmm. in real life. And even that much was enough for me personally to to want to treat it with a whole lot of respect and sensitivity that mm-hmm. I don't know. Not even do I not know if this show is capable of it. I don't know if it's possible mm-hmm. within the sphere that this show is working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's that's kind of where I fall on that. Because, again, while I am happy that it's interpretation of this is more sullen and less ex- like explicit. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
this show is kind of weird about that. It mm-hmm. is it is very uh, it is actually kind of explicit with a lot of its themes. Mm-hmm. Very done very well. I yeah. like all the visual metaphors and visual storytelling it did with those flash oh, uh, like those I love that shit. Yeah, those dream <clears throat> sequences were the per- the right match for this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Oh, cool. You are just psychological enough to actually explore these things, but you don't you know, you, I don't know. It it did those well. Here it it kind of comes off as too light-handed and uh, I don't know. I don't know. He might not have even killed him. So well, yeah, <laughs> that's, and that's really curious. But but still, like whether or not he killed him, he still sees that that violent confrontation yeah. that he had led to that guy's death. Yeah, and there, the, you know, it's impossible to divorce yourself from that situation. And not, what I think we're seeing is the growth of him turning into a pacifist. Is that what you're seeing develop? Is now he's going to start seeing that, and he might again. He might not have even died, but if he internalizes it like that. Now he's fully on side the pacifist dudes. It's also interesting to see the context of everything that's because this show is all about recontextualizing the things that have happened. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's it, like one of its. That's actually one of its selling points is that you think this happened. Give it mm-hmm. a couple episodes, you'll figure out that there's actually new context to it. Yeah, like everything that happened with the Syrians. At first, you think, oh, that poor race, something happened to them, something terrible. Then you find out that, oh yeah, actually they were a bunch of assholes. And they kind of had it coming. And the dragon was the embodiment of justice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, um, okay. And then you and you figure out with uh, the Realian. Uh, mm-hmm. y- you know, it's like, oh, she's this, the stock maid character. And then you figure out how she got into that role. And that's interesting. And I like I like the fact that, again, she's an empath. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if the character that she's developed into had something to do with that like, she, mm-hmm. like yeah. the dragon was like, your synapses will burn out if you don't yeah, yeah. stop. Um, and so there's there's a lot that's going on there, and I'm still very interested. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold up this egg time because I I'm worried about this show, but I'm also really curious. Um, this I wasn't sure what they were gonna do after that last episode, which actually left me feeling limper than this one. Mm-hmm. But with all with all that interest that I have, I'm also like, okay. You can royally fuck this up because the narrative, the, the the route you're going is really complicated. You mm. were talking about the necessity of violence in, in you know, in, in, in the response to war. Like, oh man, like better shows yeah. than this have tried and fucked it up grandly. Steven Universe, I'm looking at you. So let's let's see. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited for you to watch original Gundam because this is something that anybody who's watched a lot of the Gundam shows, this is always a prevalent theme is that is dealing with children, recognizing and understanding mankind's capacity for violence and how that only increases over time. And the, the better we get at everything, the better we get at killing each other and dealing with uh, reconciling that anger and our proclivity uh, to exhaust resources and kill people that want them when we want them instead. So this is going a very interesting route. I don't think, I'm going to stay up hand, I don't think they're going to handle it perfectly. They're going to fuck up somewhere because this is a very hard thing to engage in what is going to be a 13-episode show. Uh, That said, people love this mangaka, so I'm kind of excited and riding on that hype to see, okay, he's hot shit, let's see what he's got. Uh, This is my first exposure to him, and I'm I love what I've seen so far, and the fact that he's even telling this kind of story is engaging enough for me. I, I kind of feel bad because I'm kind of in that same boat of, like, I've heard so many things about this mangaka. Am I letting some, like, egregious stuff slide because mm-hmm. I want to see where it's going? And th- I, I think I've definitely let a couple things. Like, okay, that's weird. I'm not sure I'm digging on it, but I've heard good things. I'm mm-hmm. going to stick this through. And, again, there are still things that I really have liked. And, again, a lot of it's visual stuff. It's mm. visual storytelling, and its concepts have been really good. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Because, again, I, th- I think this could royal like, th- it w- could. the subject matter that it's tackling could royally fuck this could up. Totally. So we'll see. So Kieran and I had a really good conversation last week uh, about what we like in storytelling. Oh, Kieran, yeah. Kieran likes, throw all the rules out, mm-hmm. let's get experimental, let's get crazy. Mm-hmm. And I realized... It's not that I think that everything has to follow this strict formula, but it's more to my liking when 
you throw one rule out mm -hmm. and see what happens. Yeah. Throw, you know, largely follow the structure, but then put this one weird twist on it. I, I said it's like an experiment. Yeah. Isolate the variable that you're testing and then alter that variable and see what happens. I think it is possible to do more than that, but I think the more of those, like those rules of storytelling didn't come out of nowhere. They're there for a reason. That doesn't mean you can't break them, but the more of them you break at once, the better you have to be mm -hmm. to not just lose control and let it spin wildly out. Yep. This show has is dealing with some interesting themes and i was so fucking lost for the first 6 episodes as of this 7th episode there are some big question marks this new girl with the hypno eyes mm -hmm. who we've barely talked about oh what's, yeah oh, what's yeah. her deal oh well that's we know who that is well yeah well, she's, but, she's yeah. of this she's of the ceiling faction and that's kind of all we know yeah but like her as a character like, yeah. what is her deal mm -hmm. this this weird alien that takes a form that you're comfortable with some elder god probably yeah. <laughs> what's what's he doing here what's his purpose in all this mm -hmm. we've still got a lot of those question marks but they are at least as of right now built on a foundation on a world that i can tell you in broad strokes what the fuck's going on and that's mm -hmm. not something that i could do <laughs> up until this point <laughs> yeah and i hate straight up hate how we got here okay mm -hmm. <laughs> i I don't think anything in particular is served by obscuring these interesting themes behind three layers of hot anime bullshit that I've <laughs> got to get past that I honestly would not have gotten past mm -hmm. if not for this show and if not especially for Kieran saying, hey, here's what I see. Here's what I'm getting out of this and causing me to reflect further on it. I still don't know how much faith I have in this show. You know, like Kieran straight up said, like, I don't, I don't think it will handle it perfectly. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will either. Will it handle it well enough to be worth it? I don't know. But yeah. as of this seventh episode, I'm going to, I want to give it <laughs> a chance to get there. I'm interested enough in where it's going to, to give it some leeway to get there. And we'll see. Nice. We'll see. I mean, this is like, this is kind of one of those like, oh, who the fuck cares? We know what's dying anyway, but. No, I, th I think that's pretty substantial. The fact that a show this further in could change your view on that. But I also think it is definitely, as you said, benefited by us talking about mm -hmm. it. Because me being the mecha super fan, I get what they're doing. You not having seen as much is just like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even then, I, yeah, I think you you like doing just the take one thing away. Mm -hmm. Whereas this was like, now nah, we're gonna take like five, six, seven things away and just fucking go <laughs> to which I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's fucking see what you got. But now that we've got more context, like you pointed out, I think more backstory, we now know where everything's at. I feel like there's very few question marks now in terms of the past. So it's like, okay, let's go. Yeah. And by and large, I now know where all of these characters stand mm -hmm. and that is doing a lot for me. Yeah. I, I like, and I was, the things that it was doing up until here have all been all these own interesting things, own interesting mm -hmm. takes. Again, with all the dream sequences, with the conflicts, with the uh, questions that keep getting raised. The flip uh, narrative of him being what would be the villain of any other show. Yeah, that was effective. I really dug on that. Um, and now, but, and I'm really glad that it decided, okay, we're going to tell you what's what because yeah. I wouldn't want to keep No, it, it I, had to right now, honestly. Yeah. I, if it was going to do it at any time, yeah, I agree. It mm. had to be now. I'm also really glad that uh, that our uh, our pan uh, like oh, what's her name? The the two members that were left of mm -hmm. the uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Th the ones who never got any backstory. Oh, good, they're yeah, here. Yeah, so now yeah. they're there. So we'll we'll see some more of them hopefully. Yeah, I'm really curious to see where they go. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you like it because I I don't want. I never want people to suffer <laughs> with watching <laughs> shit because I've suffered enough shit. I always vote just saying, hey, this is what I like. And that's, that's as far as my thought goes with it. I'm glad you're in, like, finding something out of it because I do feel like I have fun talking about it here and I'm glad you're at least 
hopefully enjoying the time when you're not talking about it <laughs> a bit more. Uh, How interesting that with review that with this episode in particular, <laughs> yeah. we are now lining up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because this was a decompression. Like we've been throwing all this crazy anime shit at you. Let's just get a little normal for a second. This was definitely the most normal episode. Yeah, and I think that helped. There is a plot point that I'm sort of fuzzy on, and I'm not sure if it's just a function of not paying close enough attention. Mm -hmm. But the pacifist faction and the ceiling faction. Yeah. So the pacifists want to take the vials so that we can't be in robots and be dragons. Mm -hmm. And the ceiling faction wants to do what that's different than that? They want to quarantine any race they see has a proclivity for violence. Yeah. They, okay. want, they want to say, oh, you, they see themselves as, we're going to lock all the guns away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just so only us can have, only we can have guns. They're instead they're going to say uh, they're going to be the police state, mm -hmm. and the ceiling the pacifist faction is going to be there are no guns. So ceiling faction says we get guns because we're good. Mm -hmm. You don't get guns because you're violent. Whereas ceiling faction says there should be no guns. Period. Or so, pacifist mean. So how does how does Karoy fit in that? Because he's got guns. They sort of straight up handed him a gun and said, go in, go handle Isn't this gun. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's no. kind of the the thing that I'm giving this show. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't yeah. something that I was missing. No, you're not missing all that. that. Okay. Because right now, from a practical standpoint, they seem sort of identical to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving the show leeway to show that there actually is a difference, but I'm not seeing it yet. Yeah. Well, again, so uh, the idea... The idea is we all need to stop this th this war, which means you know we shouldn't be attacking them, and they you know we should all be trying to work towards love, and it's like you got a gun though, yeah, yeah you exactly. got that gun going after those guys with guns. How does that work? And and you know what? In this episode, what happens with Kuroi? Mm -hmm. He walks away and says, "I don't want anything to do with this." Yeah. I think I I you know I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't think too much about that, but mm -hmm. yeah. I, that is, and I don't think that is a narrative fault. I think, I think that that's is, in, I think that's intentional. I, I hope that is. Yeah. I ho I wholeheartedly hope that that's part of the narrative. Like, hey, so Mr. Guy with the gun trying to take the guns away from everybody else, so nobody <laughs> yeah. has guns. Well, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I think they've very much shown that that's intentional when it comes to the ceiling faction. They've mm -hmm. done enough to juxtapose them with like the Luthor looking guy. Yeah, yeah. That it's pretty obvious. Like, yeah, they're. They don't want to eliminate guns. They just want to be the only ones who have them. And yep. it's it's largely coming from a place of good intentions, mm -hmm. yeah, but exactly. still. Yeah. Mm. And in fact, I would say it's like, yeah, again, at least when it comes to uh, the one dude, I, I can never remember his name, the, the dog. Yeah. Mm. The, yeah. The Generalissimo. Yeah. What, yeah. Generalissimo. Generalissimo. Yeah. What a fantastic phrase. As, as you said last <laughs> yeah. time, it's like. It's like, we're trying to take guns away from children. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. These people, like, they're going to shoot themselves, and it's... Yep, which is what every fascist throughout history has said. You, people <laughs> mm -hmm. people yep. can't handle freedom. They need us to show them the way. Yeah, which is... So, again, I, I don't think you're wrong in being confused about that, because, yes, he has accomplished everything he has with a gun, so I'm curious what they're going to do. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's just rough, because they've, they've been presenting it as though there is a clear difference, and so far there isn't, and that's, that is kind of like you say what this show does mm -hmm. they present things one way and then flip the script yeah and and that's why these first couple of episodes i would not like i would not necessarily okay if i could change anything i wouldn't make those mega battles look a little bit better <laughs> um but i wouldn't want to change it narratively because what it is now done has introduced it's introduced us to a universe with set rules and ideas and now it wants to challenge those and that's mm -hmm. cool yeah that's I'm, I'm i'm so curious about the fact that everything he's done up until now, has been through violence. Violence that he and everyone else on his team have justified. You know, going against these people and like, no, you don't, like, you know, it, you know, again, he take, they take the guns away, but they also, like, they're fighting themselves and they're fighting the soldiers. But through that, are they doing the right thing? Because, mm -hmm. again, it's more violence, more battle. I, I, yeah. I know, this is like Goku looking at the screen and going, maybe punching people isn't the answer. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Okay, how are you going to get there? <laughs> Which, you know what? A lot of people talked about, like, hey, maybe that can be one of Goku's, the things that Goku should learn is the power. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, they're never ne going to do gonna that. That's never going to happen. They can like, never do that. Like, this yeah. is Dragon Ball. The, <laughs> the answer is never going to not be brute force. And if it's, <laughs> if it's not brute force, then it's brute force accompanied with something else. Yeah, and we've so. and I feel like that's the narrative trend we've seen so much with anime. And this show is so anime that I'm like, 
okay, you're like, you're juggling chainsaws here. Are you gonna, <laughs> are you gonna cut your own dick off? I'm curious. Yeah. But what I don't want it to boil down to is, oh, we figured it out. Here's this Care Bear stare love beam that makes yeah. everything okay. That's still coated as if it were violence, but it's mm -hmm. pink, so yep. that makes it better. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is uh, such an easy trap for shit like this to fall into, because mm -hmm. how do you how do you make an action anime where the final solution isn't punch the right guy hard enough? Yeah. In some way, shape, or form. That's what that's what I liked honestly so much. I mean, you didn't like Undertale. I don't know if you mm -hmm. went back and saw like the pacifist stuff or anything, but mm -hmm. that's what that sh that I think narratively carried the weight of the, you know, pacifism versus violence better than a lot of other things I've seen where the end, you hug them. Like, that's how you win. <laughs> like, yeah. that's good. I, yeah, I, I think the problem I had with that, and I did not play all the way through, mm -hmm. and I had a, a few problems with it, actually. Yeah. But, a little twee for your own. Yeah. <laughs> but the biggest, a big problem that I had was that no, this kid straight up gets kidnapped. This is an abusive situation. <laughs> no court in the world would, like... <laughs> This is justifiable violence. This is uh, self-defense. These this is monsters coming at me with a gun. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not gonna tell tell you to hug them until they become your friend. <laughs> yeah, no, there there's a there, and I will say that your your gripe is intentional. Like there's a lot going on there if you keep like fighting them. Like that is addressed. But but yeah. Yeah. I also just straight up didn't find it an enjoyable, fun gameplay experience. No, it, and like I think that I honestly weirdly enough, I think Planet With is the undertale of anime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think there's enough weird yeah. shit yeah. that like at its bare bones you see it and like this is just some weird, stupid shit. But the more I think you keep going with it, the more it is actually trying to say something about itself using itself in a weird way. Yeah. And there's a reason. Like, and maybe the you know, I, I always wondered from the very beginning of the show if what it was trying to do was wholeheartedly intentional and whether or not it should have been more overt about it or less overt. Mm -hmm. And actually, if I had to be honest with you, I would not have minded it being a little more overt. Yeah. And that's coming from the guy who, again, blew review Starlight for five <laughs> whole episodes straight. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad to see that I, th I really believe that it's going to pay off the, the concepts that so. it has and the... Like the setup of here are Earth's defenders and here's the enemy and it's a black and white situation that they immediately subvert and then will continue to subvert as yeah. it goes along. Yeah, no, it's it's doing a lot. That's it, that's the most dynamic stuff I think I've seen in a while. So yeah. I'm glad you like it and I'm glad we have. I'm glad we can talk about this because this is the show that I get the most jazzed about, honestly. Yeah, I mean it's it's Chio School Road. This. Review Starlight and Happy Sugar Life are shows that I still enjoy watching, mm -hmm. uh, and they all ha they all they all provide different things. <laughs> yeah, they're all very very different ways. Um, and even though I I knived two of them this week, let that be known that it's only because you know the things that I get from them. It's only because they're garbage and you're terrible. They're for very life. they're very <laughs> they're very. You can't, we can't pull Ben that far. <laughs> they're, they're very personal, and it's hard for me to kind of like put it out there. Like you really should watch this. Because they have grown very personal, and I'm struggling holding up that eggplant for them. I know, that's that's fine. I I always say this is just me showing you if it's if I'm fucking it. Okay, yeah, you yeah. will you will, you don't want to put a bag on it if you don't want to touch it. If you want to give it a tail, if you want to give it ears, whatever you want. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm glad Planet With gave me something to glom onto, or else I would have given just straight knives oh, all I, down the line. I and, know, and that's why I'm glad you at least have something. Yeah, and yo, I I would do it if that's if that's. What my heart was telling me, but <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be that guy if I can help it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Did you knife? E you knifed everything else. Everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. It up and up until this week, it was well. At least I got banana fish, and then mm -hmm. by this week, it's like yeah, but no though. Yeah. I what? Feel you, you. you you don't you don't want Chinese boy girl you know being evil yeah. and. Yeah. You like the sexy scene where he like stabs on there on top of it, and he's like crying, and it's all like. Real weird. God, it's so baitish. It's so baitish. Oh, I know. Like, I don't like to use the. I really don't like to use the term term queer bait, like because I feel like there have been a lot of shows that have undeservedly gotten that uh, thrown at it. But wow, this show is one hundred percent. Look how cute these boys are together. Wouldn't it be nice if they were a couple? Never gonna happen. But hey, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> don't you want to see that? Don't you want to see their relationship grow together? Uh, so, because Banana Fish is a show that was transplanted from the 80s to the current year, yeah. I was watching that scene with the hacking into the computer like a fucking hawk. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, so, right? <laughs> so, that scene does happen with a computer, but it's a very different computer and a very different way of going about it. I'm glad it was XP, though. That's 
that's I totally buy that. Do you know how many people still run like admin stuff on XP? Yeah. Some Although that, haven't done yeah. it. Although it's weird because we didn't have did we have the kind of phones like touch screen phones back when we had XP? Well, no, Kieran's saying no, there I'm are saying people who are still now, running XP today. Nowadays, so, people still use XP for backend servers. Like uh, that, you're, that's you're, still you're, pretty you're, common. You're, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The the one the one chink I could find is that uh, is that Ash is very clearly ha sorry. <laughs> no, go no. on. No, the one chink in the armor that I could find. <laughs> Yeah, in this episode? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the one chink in this episode's armor that I could find. I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah? is that Ash is very clearly uh, hacking into the DOS layer, and Windows uh -huh. XP was the first version of Windows that did not run on top of DOS. That ran oh, natively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was. Wow, clear. that's a man. Yeah, and you <laughs> needed to be looking so fucking yeah. closely and know enough about outdated versions of Windows. That is not a criticism. That is just an interesting thing that yeah. I noticed. What was that one phrase you were you were googling that you said? You found no, 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 okay. absolutely not. All right, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> to all of our Chinese viewers, please know that we love and adore you. <laughs> oh. I would close it off, but I feel like you're the host and you have to do it. I just uh, do I? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, to all, to everybody out there who has strong chinkless armor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, you know, so, I love you. Yeah, okay, thank see you so you later. much. You guys are the best. Uh, 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 what, what died? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, um, fucking. Yeah, don't say it. Review Starlight. Yep. Uh, We're breaking free. I finally found the chink in its armor. <laughs> Position zero. Position zero. Bye. 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 Bye.